Now I'd like to welcome Barry. Barry is a software engineer at Nationwide who in, in, in his role, he goes around Nationwide and helps people with problem solving and approaching problems from different mindsets as well as different tools and solutions to those problems. Barry's going to be talking about how we can use those same problem solving skills like MacGyver, so maybe some chewing gum and paper clips as well. Please welcome Barry. Hey, thank you. Yes, I am Barry Tarleton, and this is the MacGyver Mindset for Mastering Problem Solving. Just a heads up, uh, this is meant to be a little humorous, so feel free to laugh. Uh, hopefully we'll also learn some things and uh, maybe be inspired. Uh, he kind of gave you a little bit about my background, just real quick, uh, as far as my education goes uh, regarding uh, software development. In elementary and high school, I was able to do uh, basic programming on Apple IIEs. Does anybody remember those things? Oh yeah, there you go, quite a few. So uh, that was fun. That was my first introduction to programming. Uh, being from a small town in southern Ohio, I never thought of computers as a career though. So when I went to college, I started out to become a high school chemistry teacher. But I took some programming classes in college and just fell in love with it again. And so I ended up graduating with a bachelor's in computer science in class of 99. And it's no wonder looking at my photo ID that I did graduate from the College of Engineering. Of course, I look much cooler now, right? Um, <laughs> moving on along. When I got out of college in 99, I actually started working for a company. We did uh, retirement software uh, for um, government agencies. So I worked there for about six years. Of course, when you bump into people like a family reunion, uh, when they say, what do you do? You just say, yeah, I work with computers. And they imagine you look like this or do something like that, right? Uh, but about 11 years ago, I joined Nationwide. At that time, Nationwide had just switched to start using Java. That was their direction. They said, hey, we're going to start using Java as our main technology at least in the area I joined. And the team I joined was called App Dev Consulting. And we would go around to different lines and help them come up to speed with Java technologies, open source frameworks, and tools around Java. And it's been interesting over the last 11 years at Nationwide, I've had um, a similar kind of consulting role. Now, as Preston and Jared shared with you, the tools and technologies have changed a lot. We still have some Java, but we have a lot of other tools and uh, languages and platforms at Nationwide. But in my role, I've been able to work with a lot of these different lines and uh, learn a lot of things, and also see a lot of different kinds of issues and problems that we face within IT. And real quick, I'm gonna cover a few of these common issues that you guys face day to day and I face day to day. You know, as a developer, I often you know, see developer problems, you know, bugs. I've written my fair share of bugs. Of course, I try to dress them up nicely and call them a feature, right? We've all tried that. Uh, other issues is legacy systems. This is like what I have nightmares about. Uh, the little caption here you can't read, it says, welcome to the code, or welcome to the project, here's the code base, and it's, ah, it's legacy code, right? You know, trying to do anything with the legacy system because people have all moved on that knew what the code or the system was supposed to do, and so everyone's scared to death to touch it, and so they put warning signs all over it like this. It says, danger, do not touch. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt you while you die. Right? So we have legacy systems that we have to worry about. And what about this? You know, have you ever been given a complicated requirement or, or asked to do something that seems very difficult, very impossible? As a developer, lots of times my requirements came in through a user story or story card. And uh, see if you can relate to a user story something like this. As an authorized and authenticated user, I need a button that's clickable without the use of a mouse, a keyboard, or any user input device other than my mind. <laughs> oh, it gets better. And clicking the button brings about world peace. Right? So sometimes we have these, these very difficult challenges that pop up within IT, and it's like, where do I start? Or how about this, the resistance to change? We just heard Jared and Preston talking about how we're trying to change the culture at Nationwide, right? But lots of times it seems we're too busy, right? Even if it means we're trying to pull a cart with square wheels and someone is standing behind us with a round wheel. Right? So these are some of the challenges we face day to day within IT. And so I started to realize throughout my 18 years of uh, doing software development and working in different teams that, you know, we were really, um, it's not really about just software development. It's not really about IT. Our whole job is really to become great problem solvers. Right? And I started thinking about that. Problems require great problem solvers. And who's the best problem solver that I could think of? Being a child of the 80s, uh, I, I always went back to MacGyver. Now, how many of you guys have seen the original MacGyver TV series? 
Oh yeah, quite a few hands. Okay, apparently they've rebooted it. I haven't seen any of the new ones. But here's a video clip from the original MacGyver. This is actually the opening scene for all the episodes. It ran from 1985 to 1992, and the MacGyver TV show followed this secret agent whose name was Angus MacGyver, uh, played by Richard Dean Anderson. And he, was a, he would travel around the world, basically being a great problem solver. He worked for this uh, fictional organization called the Phoenix Foundation. And uh, as such, he would travel around. Like in this one, he was rescuing a village that was you know, being dominated by a drug lord. He'd break out political prisoners, uh, things like that. It was always very exciting. Wikipedia describes MacGyver this way. It says, MacGyver employs his resourcefulness and his knowledge of chemistry, physics, physics and technology to resolve what are often life or death crises. He creates inventions from simple items to solve these problems. These inventions became synonymous with the character and were called MacGyverisms by fans. MacGyver was unlike secret agents in other television series and films because instead of relying on high-tech weapons and tools, he carried only a Swiss army knife and duct tape. <laughs> so growing up watching MacGyver, you know, he was always getting himself into these crazy predicaments, these crazy problems, and, and he always had an ingenious way to get out. And so I started thinking about, you know, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis within IT is really just problem solving. And I was thinking, how can we get better at becoming problem solvers? And of course, I turned to MacGyver and said, well, what are some of the characteristics or traits that MacGyver has that we could apply day-to-day -day in our problem solving abilities within IT? And so I've got several of these traits that we're gonna go through today. And uh, my timer hasn't started, so apparently I still got 30 more minutes left. That's awesome, guys. I don't know if somebody wants to just yell at me if I've gone too long. How about that? Um, but anyways, the first MacGyver trait I want to talk about is uh, thinking out loud or verbalizing. If you ever watched MacGyver, he's always narrating. If he's by himself, you hear him talking out loud. Or if he's with, um, you know, he has a co-star with him, he's always talking through the problem. I remember one episode, there was this big vat of sulfuric acid that was leaking out. And, he you know, tells the person he's with, he says, hey, I've got these chocolate bars, and the chemical composition of these chocolate bars, when mixed with the sulfuric acid, will produce this glue that will stop the leak. And so he's talking through the problem. And I realized that you know, within programming, we have this concept of rubber duck debugging. Has anybody ever heard of rubber duck debugging? A few hands. Okay, it was made popular with the Pragmatic Programmer book by Andy Hunt and Dave Thomas. What they... Uh, described as this concept of if you have some difficult piece of code that you're trying to troubleshoot or understand, you literally take this little inanimate object, a rubber duck in their case, and you explain to the rubber duck the lines of code. You say, okay, here's what this code is supposed to be doing right here, and here's what this code is supposed to be doing right now. And actually, studies have been done around this, just generally talking, talking through problems out loud does something in your brain, helps you to better understand the actual problem and come up with a solution. And it's amazing, I've seen this in my own experience. Actually, just earlier this year, I was working with a line, and a developer said, hey, Barry, can you come look at this code real quick? I'm like, sure. So I step over, and I'm looking over his shoulder, and he's explaining some code he, he had written. And he's actually testing it. He says, see, when I click this button, it runs this code, and this code is supposed to do this, and then it calls out to this method, which does this. And as he's explaining it to, it, oh, explaining it to me, he all of a sudden says, oh, I figured it out. Thanks, Barry. I'm like, Okay, I kind of laugh and go sit back down because I didn't do anything other than just let, sit there. I was his rubber duck. <laughs> he just explained his issue to me, and it came to him as he talked through the problem, you know, what the solution was. And that's so true uh, within a day-to-day -day life is that if we talk out the problem, lots of times the, the solution comes more apparent and quicker. Now, this is the first MacGyver trait. And I've come up with a, a deep technical term for each of these MacGyver traits that ends with the ness suffix. You know, ness, which is indicating the state or condition or quality of, like greatness is the condition or quality of being great. So for this first MacGyver trait about talking out the problem, here's my, my technical term I've come up with to describe this. Gonna explain it to somethingness. All right. Uh, being from Southern Ohio, excuse me, let me say that right. Being from Southern Ohio, when we're telling something to someone, we're explaining it to them, right? You know, let me explain you something. Let me explain something to you. So this is my first technical term uh, about talking out loud. Now, actually, we're going to have some fun with this and some, have some audience participation. You have to try to guess the, the technical terms that end with nest for these characteristics, all right? Sometimes you can, you can probably come up with better ones than I did. All right, moving right along to MacGyver trait number two. Uh, this deals with analysis paralysis. 
Many times on large projects, or uh, when, when faced with a large issue, we can have this tendency to overanalyze or overthink the situation in such a way that a decision or action is never taken. Right? Have you guys ever been to a recurring meeting where you seem to talk about this problem? And each week you come back and talk about the problem? I, I got some people laughing, so I know some people have done that, right? Uh, not Earlier this year, I was in the same situation. We finally broke down and said, okay, instead of making this uh, a meeting to talk about things, let's actually start doing stuff in this meeting. And we did. It actually turned into we started doing something. But I've came up with a, a way by watching MacGyver. You know, when MacGyver is faced with this large problem, like maybe, you know, some terrorists have captured a, a prisoner and put him in some, some prison, and he's got to get in and, and break them out. He doesn't draw out this elaborate plan and, and spend weeks, you know, trying to figure out how he's going to do it, because it's too large of a problem and too dynamic of a situation. So you see MacGyver say, okay, step one is we've got to get inside the prison gates. Okay, so let's figure out that. Step two, we've got to get inside the prison itself. Step three, you know, find the cell. And what I call that is baby steps, right? He would baby step his way through the problem. And there's a great book about it. Actually, does anybody recognize where this book is from? Yeah, what about Bob? It's a fictional book. Don't go try to buy it. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, the, in the movie, What About Bob? Bob is the um, psychiatric patient who's holding the book there. His psychiatrist wrote this book just about uh, taking little steps each day to get through your problems. And that's so true with us within problem solving. I found that, um, again, when you're tackled with a large problem, you've got to break it up into smaller chunks. Uh, recently, I've been working with a project doing an API development. And in a, in nationwide, we have a, a situation where we have a lot of modern web uh, applications now that our clients expecting to make calls using REST and JSON. But on the back end, we have these service providers that are expecting XML, you know, uh, SOAP XML requests to come through. So we have to develop these proxies in the middle that will take in JSON, pass it through, but transform it first to SOAP XML, get the SOAP XML, transform it back to JSON, right? So on this line, this is a new line where we've been using this new tool called Apigee within Nationwide uh, to develop our proxies. And so we could spend a long time and try to detail and design everything there, but we would always say, hey, let's take, break this down into baby steps. Our first baby step might be to just create the proxy endpoint. Basically set up a proxy that's listening on a certain port at a certain address, and then we'd use something like Postman or some test client to send a request through. We could trace our proxy and say, hey, we got a request in. That's the first baby step. Next baby step is, hey, let's take this request message, just pass it right on through to the backend provider. Okay, the backend provider will complain because we haven't transformed it or anything, but we can watch our proxy and, and trace it and see, hey, the message came in, went to the provider, and we got a response back from the provider. Even if it's an error response, that's another baby step. Then we could actually work on, you know, maybe we'd actually hard code the XML request we're gonna send to the provider. So let's take the JSON request in, replace the request message that's JSON, put our hard-coded XML, pass it on through, and verify we get the response back. But as you see, we basically just baby step our way through this larger problem. Eventually, we have to do JSON to XML. We call a provider. We have to do XML to JSON. We do content type conversions. We also handle security, OAuth, uh, error handling, those kinds of things. But again, sometimes with a large problem, you just have to take it one baby step at a time, no matter what that problem is. So what do you think we should call this MacGyver trait characteristics? Anyone have an idea? Taking small steps through? Babiness? All right, that's good. What else? Anyone else have one? Oh, baby stepidness. Actually, that's really close to what I got. Baby step your wayness. All right. So uh, this MacGyver trait, like we said, we see MacGyver do it all the time. Just what's the next step you can take to get closer to the solution to this problem? Again, it's not that planning is bad, but you know, when you have a large problem, you've got to break it up into small baby steps. So moving right along to MacGyver trait number three, pick up things along the way. Lots of times when you're faced with a challenge, a problem, uh, you may not have all of the knowledge you need right away to tackle that. Right? You may not have even all the tools or skills you need to be able to solve that problem, but that's okay. In one of the early episodes of MacGyver, uh, MacGyver was called into this government facility where there was an explosion deep underground. There's all these underground laboratories, an explosion went off and people are trapped below. They've asked MacGyver to come in and go rescue those people trapped below. In this scene, he's, he's up top uh, getting ready to go down below and he's talking to the engineers that know the layout of the facility. 
and he asks them for a pack of cigarettes, and he puts it in this little bag, which I call the bag of holding. Okay, he's got this little bag, he puts this, bag of, uh, this pack of cigarettes in there, and the engineers look at his little bag and say, you know, MacGyver, it's gonna take a whole lot more than you can carry in that little bag to be able to get down and rescue those people. And MacGyver turns to them and says, my bag is not for what I take with me, but for what I pick up along the way. And I thought that's so profound of a statement, uh, and I can apply it every day in my life in problem solving. Because I can look back and think of many times when I started a problem, I'm like, how in the world, where do I start? I don't have even an idea of what to do. But I start doing research. I start digging in and trying to find, maybe it's a tool, maybe it's a technology, maybe it's just you know, an answer on Stack Overflow or ask the Googles, you know, help me with this problem. But it's been amazing at times that I've found information and it turns out it doesn't help me with my current problem. But several weeks later, I come into a different problem and I realize, hey, the thing I learned back here or that tool I was studying about really applies and helps me fix this problem here. Uh, and so what I've learned is that, you know, we don't carry a little bag of holding, at least most of us don't, but we do have our minds. And if we take everything we, we pick up along the way, experiences, whether they're our successes or our failures, and we tuck those away and say, hey, how can I use this down the road? I mean, how many of you guys have been part of a POC, uh, proof of concept, you develop something really cool and everyone's excited about it and then they just throw it away? Uh, maybe a, a new product comes in, they buy a packaged app, or they just run out of funding. You know, in those moments, we can be really frustrated and say, oh, man, that was a total waste. Or we can tuck it away and say, hey, I learned something here that I can probably apply later on in my life. So what do you think we should call this MacGyver trait? What is it? I didn't hear that. Say it again. Someone had one. Stored away for laterness? I like that. What else? All right, well, I just came up with pick up what you find along the wayness, which is very similar. <laughs> so remember, tuck away everything away as a learning experiences. Don't get frustrated and, and think that was a, a waste of time. So I like this one a lot. This is about practicing problem solving. There was uh, episodes of MacGyver where he would like take people himself and others and just put them out in the wilderness and see how they survive. And also MacGyver was always putting himself in situations to help other people. And so he was always practicing his craft of problem solving. If you can't read the slide, it says, anyone can be cool, but awesome takes practice, right? And it's so true, right? Because you cannot get better at anything without doing it. And that also comes, that's also true with problem solving. Uh, a pastor of mine used to always put it this way. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. All right, uh, I'll let that sink in for a second. I'll read it again. If you've always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. To me, that means, hey, if I'm not very good at a certain technology, but I'm not doing anything different, I'm not going to get better at that technology. If I'm an okay problem solver now and I continue to do what I'm doing, I probably won't become a great problem solver in the future. I'm gonna to have to do something different. And that can be sometimes scary because many times, you know, we're in our comfort zone, comfortable with what we're doing in our current role, but sometimes the magic happens over here. And notice the magic, where the magic happens, it's outside of our comfort zone. And uh, for example, uh, I've done this recently as uh, Jared and, uh, Preston, we're telling you, Nationwide has just made a, a move from Subversion as a source co control management software to using Git and also GitHub Enterprise. I'm not, I wasn't an expert at all. I've been using Git and GitHub off and on for a few years just on some personal projects, but not on a day-to-day -day basis. And I wanted to get better at it. So I started volunteering to teach teams on how to use it. But well, the problem was I didn't know how to use it myself. But as soon as I put some, some uh, you know, put it on the calendar, like, hey, I'll come train your team on it, I really had to learn really fast. And I've learned a ton in just the last few months about using Git and GitHub. And so there's things like that that you can do. I tell developers sometimes, hey, if, on, if you're on a line and there's a certain uh, area of the application you wanna learn more about, ask if you can take on that work. You know, maybe you have someone on the line that usually takes that area or that kind of work because they have expertise. But hey, maybe in your iteration planning meetings, you say, hey, you know, I would like to try to work on this at that time, you know, and so you can plan, you know, an extra point or two on that card for you to take the, the time to do it. But this can be scary, right? Because you could set yourself up for failure or at least make yourself look like an idiot, like I do all the time. But anyways, what do you think we should call this trait? 
Anyone have a good name for this? Trying things out, practicing. Oh, guess I get outside of the boxiness. All right, that's a pretty good one. Anyone else? Yeah. Find your magicness. All right, I like that. That's actually pretty good. Although I just came up with uh, mine was more simple. Practice makes betterness. Uh, now I notice I didn't say perfect because I think uh, you know we are fallible human beings. We make mistakes, uh, but our and we should be careful about not comparing ourselves to others. But our goal is to practice in such a way that we get better every day, right? We're better than we were a year before. Do we know more? Are we better at our craft uh, than we were, you know, two years back? So moving on to MacGyver trait number five, making sure you understand. Um, in doing some research for this presentation, I came across this really awesome blog article about uh, the problem-solving mindset. And this one paragraph was so powerful that I just put the whole thing in here. It says, when you develop a problem-solving mindset, you realize that there is thinking you understand and ensuring that you understand. You don't settle for thinking you understand. Instead, you use reflection to tell the speaker your understanding of what they have told you. And this is important because it provides them with the opportunity to correct any misunderstandings. This ensures that you can pursue a solution based on facts rather than miscommunications. Right, that's so true. I found uh, many times I've been called in to, to look at like a performance issue. Say, hey Barry, you know, can you come help this team? They're having some performance problem in their test environment. Help them figure it out. Or come look at this production issue that cropped up. And normally when that happens, I, I sit with uh, the technical lead, the lead developer, and maybe the infrastructure engineer or performance engineer, and they kind of outline and explain the, the situation. They explain their infrastructure, they explain the issue, and I, I feel that I'm a pretty good listener. You know, I'll sit back and listen, and then afterwards I'll come back and say, well, let me say, help me, or let me tell you what I understood. And as I start to explain back to them what they told me, it never fails. They say, well, Barry, you misunderstood something. You know, you didn't realize this was here or that. And so I found this to be so true that when you're coming into a problem, you need to talk, ask a lot of clarifying questions, or as they say, use reflection to make sure you truly understand the root problem. Because otherwise, we start assuming. And I've learned this recently. Before you assume, try this new crazy method called asking, right? And that's so true. Because when you're tackling a problem, you can waste a lot of time by going after what you think is the problem when it's not really the true root cause or root issue. Um, so what do you think we should call this characteristic, or this trait? What is that? I didn't hear you. Assumingness, yes, that, that's pretty good. Anyone else have one? What was that? Bounce it backness, that's good. Mine actually I came up with was what did you sayness? <laughs> so just make sure you reiterate. I've actually started doing this at home with my wife a lot. She's like, you have a few minutes. I'm like, sure. And I sit and listen, and then I say, okay, now can I get, ask you some clarifying questions to make sure I understand what you're really trying to say? And uh, it's actually done wonders for my marriage. So <laughs> just marital advice there. Anyways, MacGyver trait number six, never give up. Uh, you know, you find that I like this picture, right? This little mouse, he's ready to go. He's, he's determined. He's got that right attitude. He's not going to give up. Another way you could, you could say this um, that I like is stick to it. You stick to it. You guys know what movie this is from? Christmas Story, yes. My wife hates this movie with a passion and I watch it religiously every year. But uh, the point is, yeah, we don't wanna give up. We don't wanna to quit. We need to persevere. And uh, I found this to be so true in my life is that there's many times I've been working on a difficult issue, difficult problem, and you, you feel like you've tried everything, right? And you get to the point, have you guys seen the, the two states of programmers? But this applies to everyone in IT, right? There's one, I am a god, <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm doing, right? And the truth of the matter is we bounce back and forth between these, sometimes within the same day. It's like, my code compiled first try. I'm a god, I can do great things. And then the next minute you turn around, it's like, I don't have any idea, this won't work. Nothing I'm typing is working. And then you find out you missed a semicolon or something like that. And anyways, but you switch back before this. And so sometimes you can get really frustrated and say, uh, you know, oh man, I can't solve this problem. But it's been many times I've tried 10 to 12 things and it's not working and I just keep pushing through. 
And I was working with a line, uh, a guy I was pairing with. We were pairing together on this certain issue. Uh, we were working on a certain uh, feature for hours, and, that, and then it turned into days, and we finally thought we had it working. We were so relieved. And then all of a sudden we did some more thorough testing over the next couple of days and found out it wasn't working the way it needed to be. And we had to scratch it and start over. And each day we'd come back and try something different, try something different. And I would go out and do research and then we'd come back and say, hey, I was doing some research, maybe we can try this approach. And he looked at me one day and he said, Barry, you know, I really like the way you don't give up. And I told him, you know, most of the time I'm just an idiot, but I'm an idiot that keeps pushing the buttons until something works, right? And that's kind of the attitude we have to have is that we just don't give up, we keep persevering. Um, I like the way Thomas Edison said this, right? I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And again, as I stated earlier, right, we can learn from our failures just as much as we learn from our successes and just keep pushing on. And it's kind of neat that over the years, um, I don't even get as frustrated as much anymore when I hit that brick wall. Actually, recently, I, I was in a situation where I, I tried so many things and th this thing was not working out the way I wanted it to. And I, was, I started to get frustrated and then I realized, hey, you know what, I've been in this situation many times before. If I just keep putting forth the effort, keep pushing through, I'll find a solution. And uh, so it's really cool if you, don't, if you just stick with it. Oh, so speaking of which, what, is, what should we call this MacGyver trait? I am not retired yet, Ness. All right. What else? Anyone else have one? True grittiness? All right. From up in the balcony. All right. I, mine was much shorter. Stick to itness. All right. But I like your guys' better. All right. The, the final MacGyver trait, MacGyver trait number seven that we're going to talk about today is dealing with doing whatever it takes. Um, and you know, you'd see this within the MacGyver. TV series all the time. You know, no matter what weird situation was, you know, the lack of tools or supplies that he had, he figured a way out of it. Now, I've actually got a video clip that's not from MacGyver, so forgive me, but this video clip makes this point uh, really well. It's actually from the first Men in Black. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's all right. In this scene I'm going to show you, Will Smith is the actor. His character is a New York City police officer, and he's trying out for this uh, special secret uh, agency for the government, along with several highly trained military men. They've gone through some physical training and now they're getting ready to take a written test. And so here they are all sitting in their little egg-shaped chairs and they've been told to take this written test. And uh, there's no sound today, but um, he just ripped his front cover there. I'll just let you watch this for a second. So at this point in time, you'd hear a very loud screeching sound. I'll try to imitate it. Screech! But <laughs> it's all quiet, and he, he drags the table over there. Then he asks his neighbor, hey, you want to get down on this? <laughs> uh, I love that video clip, because here you got six of these guys. They're all in the same predicament, right? They're all in the, facing the same problem, sitting in these little egg-shaped chairs, uh, trying to, to take this test. But it's only Will Smith's character that says, has the, the frame of mind to say, hey, I'm gonna you know, do whatever it takes to help solve this problem. He sees that table and just a simple solution, right? But it took getting out and doing something different. And uh, you know, I think that's so true of us uh, when we're facing problems and issues. You know, especially changing people's mindset, right? The culture as far as moving to DevOps. You know, how do we get out there and start helping people realize that there is a different, there is a better way. And so my key takeaway with this one is to don't do normal. Obviously, the guy in this picture isn't confined by normality, but uh, you know that should be our goal. You know, we shouldn't be tied to, hey, how have we always done it, right? 
it's okay to first look and say, how have other people done this thing, right? But let's not be confined with, hey, here's what everyone else is doing. Let's look and see. Sometimes, you know, normal problems have, you know, normal solutions, but sometimes unique problems have unique solutions. So we have to be willing to step outside of the box and look at those. Um, what do you think we should call this MacGyver trait? 10 headiness, what? 10 hattiness. All right, so not being normal. MacGyverness? All right, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know what? I cannot even remember what I called it. Let's see. Do what you got to do this. Oh, yeah, okay. Do what you got to do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we've been going through all these MacGyver traits, and what's really cool is that, you know, we haven't talked really about any specific tool or technology, right? And at a DevOps conference, you might think, well, how does this apply? Well, hopefully we know that, you know, with the DevOps and just with current situation of IT, tools and technologies are changing all the time, right? You know, the things that I learned five years ago, you know, I'm learning new things. You know, I have to learn new things to keep up. And so what we find is just like with MacGyver, you know, it wasn't the special tools or gadgets that he had. It was his mind was his most powerful weapon. In the same way, for us to drive forward in this DevOps continuous delivery kind of mindset, it's going to take us changing our mind and transforming other people's minds to become expert problem solvers. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you guys so much for your attention.